What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Mitch Rice and today we're going to be talking all about and answering the question, what exactly is an ESR or a SED rate? But before we begin, as always, there'll be timestamps here at the beginning of the video, so feel free to jump around to whatever interests you the most. So starting off, what is a SED rate? Before we can fully answer what a SED rate is, I think it's important for us to take a look at the specific components of blood itself. The blood that leaves your body, like when you cut your skin or when you get your blood drawn at the hospital, is what we refer to as whole blood. This whole blood that's drawn up from your arm at the hospital is then placed into tubes. These tubes are then collected and sent down to the lab where they are then placed into something called a centrifuge. A centrifuge is kind of like a really expensive carnival ride, and it'll take those tubes and spin them round and around and around at extraordinarily fast rates that would probably make any human being pass out. This allows this whole blood to be spun down into its components, which I'm gonna put on the screen right here. Thus, whole blood has three major components to it. The largest section is known as plasma. Plasma is basically just a bunch of water and some proteins. The second largest component of whole blood are your actual red blood cells. And then there's a small layer in the middle that's called a buffy coat. This this layer is made up of white blood cells and platelets. If you want to know even more information about the specific components of blood, I'll put a link to that video in the top corner. So now that we know a little bit about the specific components of blood that are in the test tubes, we can now get a better idea of what an actual SED rate is. Again, I keep saying SED rate, but the full name is actually erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So the full name of this blood test actually very eloquently describes what the test is doing. So breaking down the name, erythrocyte means red blood cell, sedimentation means falling towards the bottom of something or settling, and rate is just a specific time frame in which this process occurs. So putting it all together, the SED rate is the rate at which the erythrocytes or the red blood cells fall towards the bottom of the test tube. And this is actually measured in millimeters per hour. So we check and see how many millimeters the red blood cells have fallen in the test tube that the blood was originally drawn from. So moving on to why this test is used. SED rate is used in the diagnosis and management of a wide variety of different diseases. Some of these include chronic inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, as well as infections such as pneumonia. I think it's important to mention here that the SED rate can actually be elevated or slightly increased under normal physiological circumstances. Some of these include individuals who are pregnant, individuals who are menstruating, and individuals who are more mature, elderly. It can also be increased in individuals taking specific medications, such as higher doses of vitamin A and oral contraceptive pills, better known as birth control. So what is the normal range of a SED rate? Like I mentioned before, age can definitely play a role in your overall SED rate numbers. I'll put up the normal values here on the screen. Again, like I've mentioned with some of my previous videos, these values can change slightly depend on where you're getting your blood drawn. So for men younger than the age of 50, the normal value should be less than 15. For women less than 50, the normal value should be under 20. And for men older than the age of 50, a normal value should be less than 20. And for women older than the age of 50, a normal value should be less than 30. If you get blood work and you find out that your SED rate is elevated or above of these range values, it could mean that you have some sort of inflammatory process occurring in your body. If you're concerned about your SED rate, please talk with your local healthcare provider. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you'd like to know even more medical information that may be pertinent to your overall health, please visit my website at www.wellsci.info. Again, thank you, and I will see you all on the next one.